Hi, I'm glad you could join me for another free painting lesson. I'm Wilson Bickford and I'm going to show you a little urban uh, cityscape today just for something different and totally different than the other lessons I've been bringing to you. Um, what I have planned today is a little outline of a city skyline with some maybe sunset colors behind it, some reflections of the skyscrapers in the foreground and some water. Um, I'm going to be using some of my signature fast flow white base medium. Uh, I'll be using my uh, signature oils which are very full and heavy bodied made for wet on wet applications and I've kind of eked this out in my mind a little bit I'm thinking I'm pretty much going to be limited to a few tools here so I think I'm going to be using a two inch scenery brush my one inch texture brush my number 10 flat brush my one inch mop brush number six small flat brush and my number two detail liner now that's subject to change depending on what I get into here, but I think that's about all I'm going to require. Um, from what I have in my mind, I'll get these materials out of my way here. So I got more working space. I have some of the fast flow white medium right here on a disposable palette. I also have a little bit of my signature fast flow clear medium. These oils are really thick and pasty, almost like caulk. Um, they're made heavy bodies so you can put heavier layers down and thin subsequent layers over the top. So I need some of this clear medium to thin these down as need be as I progress with the painting. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to take my two inch scenery brush. Now I'm thinking of a band of dark through here and then skyscrapers out of that. So I don't want to put the white medium through this area in the center. You'll see I'm going to leave that open. Um, just for clarity, let's do it this way. I'll give you a little sense of where I'm putting it and where I'm not. Just so on camera it'll translate and you can see it. I'm going to use a real faint blue here but probably right in through this area in the middle between these blue lines I'm not going to put any of the white medium that will allow me to put a nice dark in there and it'll stay dark and you'll see why like I said I want it to be a silhouette scene so anywhere I want it dark I don't put this white base coat by the way I'm using one of my signature canvas panels here too which are made of MDF core which is similar to masonite they're very warp resistant archival quality triple primed so if you haven't given those a shot give those a try too I'm sure you're gonna love them okay I'm gonna put some above that line and see the advantage I have over you is I can see this in my head so I know where I'm going with it you're kinda following along blindly here but you'll see right off how this is gonna take shape uh, painting is nothing more than getting an idea in your head and translating it to your canvas um, the more you do it obviously the easier it gets for you and you can compose things right on the fly as you go like I said I have a general idea where I'm going with this for my oils today I have uh, cadmium yellow pale hue cadmium red deep cobalt blue hue ivory black and titanium white so basically I've got the primaries and a lightener and a darkener um, so it's very few tools very few colors to do something like this so if you're a city person this painting will probably interest you I'm more of a country boy, but I can appreciate beauty in the world no matter where it is, even if it's in the city. So I thought I'd throw something diff different at you today. I'm going to put a nice swath of yellow. I'm thinking that this will be skyscrapers from this band up, and there will be reflections in some water below. So see that area in the middle between the blue stripes? I didn't put any white medium. When I go to put dark in there, that will stay nice and dark for me. And obviously this is a, a quick lesson just to show you how you would approach something like this. When you're painting it at home, you'd have a lot more time to put into it and uh, you could slow down and really detail it somewhat. I'm going to take some uh, cadmium red light into that and I'm going to go fairly deep with that. Now since I have yellow on the brush, if I use less red, it's going to go a little more orangey, which is fine if that's the color you want. I want this a little deeper red, so I'm going to really put some red into this. I'm going to start way up here. Get a flavor that you like. And I'm just going to kind of roll this together to get a softer edged transition into the yellow so it looks rather cloud-like and soft. And if that's in the sky, it's going to be reflected into the water below. So I'll do the same thing down here. Just kind of roll them together. Can you see where that's starting to make a little bit more sense to you if you picture a skyline in here? 
that's coming up right off. Okay, I'm going to go a little darker red down here in the water. I'm just doing that because I feel like it. Okay, so I'll dance a little more color into that. I'm going to take a minute and wipe this brush off. I'm going to come back with something a little deeper and darker. Um, I'll probably take a little bit of cobalt blue into that. Red and blue, as you know, will give you purple. So I want kind of a grayish purple tone for the upper sky a little darker than what's on my canvas thus far. Maybe something about like that. If that's a little too dark, I'll lighten it back just a tad with some titanium white. That looks pretty good. I want kind of a blue-gray. Maybe that's a little too gray. See, that's an adjustment. You don't know until you get it on your canvas against the colors you're working with. I'll use a little more blue with that. That's not a mistake, I always tell my students. That's an adjustment. And I'm just going to kind of wiggle this into the red that I had on there. So it just kind of transitions. I want it to look lighter on the horizon, getting increasingly darker as it goes skyward. Like it's uh, either late day or early morning. Anybody who looks at this is going to construe it as something different. Some people will think it's noon, or noon, no, not noon, but uh, midday. I'll get it right here in a minute. Um, they'll think it's either morning or evening. I'm concentrating on my brush stroke here, not paying attention to my words. Okay, I'm going to take uh, this brush and wipe it off again. And I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. That'll pretty much give me my sky. Now, remember earlier on I said something about putting some uh, skyline in here. I want that to be fairly dark. So I'm going to take my one-inch texture brush, and I'll use some black. I don't want it to be pure black, though, so I'm going to take black, blue, and red, which will give me kind of a purplish undertone, but yet it's going to be very dark. And I'm going to thin that with just a little bit of my clear medium over here. I want this really dark. And I'll put a swath of that right through there to take up the bulk of the dark value that I need there. And then I'll pull some buildings out of that. Okay, that'll get me started. Now, since we're working wet on wet, this area where the dark meets the light yellow is going to pick up some of that yellow. So I'm conscious of that. So I'm gonna, you'll see that I thin my paint down accordingly as I go. If I get the paint a little thinner, I can skate it on over the top of that a little easier without picking up so much of the wet uh, yellow into my color and lightening it back. And I will have to ultimately come back and kind of fuzz everything together with my mop brush. Um, experience tells me that. I just know from doing paintings in the past I'll have to wiggle those together a little bit, and you'll see as I progress with this, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm going to use my number 10 flat brush, and I'm thinking skyscrapers in here. Now, if you live in a city or close to a city, I don't. I'm a country boy. I live right out in the sticks. But if you live close to the country, or close to the city, rather, and uh, you have a opportunity to take a photo of the skyline in your area you might want to do that I'm just randomly going to throw some building shapes in here I'm not thinking any specific city or anything like that I'm just showing you the technique so you'll know how to approach it I'm going to put some in with this brush and then I'll switch over and use my smaller flat brushes to get different sizes on these buildings This is an 11 by 14 panel, by the way. If you wanted, you could use a much bigger canvas. You'd probably want to scale it and use some of the larger brushes. Or you could scale it down and use some of the smaller brushes. This brush works pretty good for this size canvas for the scale that I'm shooting for right now. And I don't want them all the same size, so I'm going to kind of vary this a little bit. Now, whatever is silhouetted against the sky. I'm, I'm thinking there's water down below here. 
So that has to come down in the water. I'm just taking more of these same dark colors, blue, red, and black. So in here, there's going to be a horizon line eventually. But this will be a reflection of these colors. And notice I'm kind of paying attention to the heights. The taller buildings will reflect a little lower. I'm not nearly as critical in the water area because that's going to be blurred. So I'm not as fussy down here. Eventually I'm going to smear that and blur it, which will make it look like water. So that's why I'm not taking too many pains with the exactness of the shapes in the water area. But if you're new to painting or have never given it a try, you really owe it to yourself to give it a shot. Painting is one of those activities that anybody can enjoy, no matter what level you take it to. Some of you will be more serious about it than others. Some of you will just do it as a hobby, but it's a great pastime. Really, compared to a lot of uh, hobbies out there, it's not really as expensive as a lot of other hobbies. By the time you pay your greens fees and whatnot for the country club for the year, uh, painting is probably relatively cheap. Get a few brushes and a few paints to start. Okay, I'm going to set that brush to the side for a second. I'm going to use my number six small flat brush. And I'm just going to do more of the same. I'm running out of some of this dark, so I'm just mixing more up on the fly. It's just black, blue, and red. And a little bit of the medium to facilitate the spread of it onto the canvas. And I'll mat this together. And I want some different size buildings in here. Uh, let me see here. Maybe there's something here with a. We're looking at it at a different angle. It's got a little bit of a peaked roof on it. There's all kinds of buildings in the city. So, like I said, I'm just winging this, showing you how to approach something like this. You might have some landmarks in your area that you want to kind of duplicate, which would be fine. I'm just trying to throw different ideas at you how to use these materials for wet on wet painting rather than just the waterfalls and the sunsets and things I've shown you so far. By the way, um, we do have a lot of free art lessons on the Jerry's website as well as my own website, wilsonbickford.com and jerrysartorama.com where uh, they're just free art lessons that uh, are clips that we filmed back a couple of years ago. Some of you might not be familiar with those yet. Check those out as well. Those are more geared towards smaller little clips on techniques for just certain aspects of a painting, not a whole painting like I'm doing here now. But they're, we've had a tremendous response from those and they're very popular, so do yourself a favor and check those out. They're pretty interesting. It's not just me, there's dozens of other artists on there showing you all kinds of things, portrait techniques, all kinds of stuff. Okay, so I'm just putting some different elements in here. Maybe something with a spire on it like that. Like I said, I'm not too worried about the water nearly as much. I'm just putting all these little stair steps in here to break that up. I'm going to come back and put some lighting in some of these areas, like windows. And see how I'm holding the brush? I'm taking it off the back of the brush. I'm holding it really flat. If I go in typically like you would with a brush like this and use the end, it just dredges up more of the yellow underneath. It actually removes more paint than to, than to deposit it off the brush. So I have to take it off the back side of the brush. And see how it looks kind of milky in there? It's because it's picking up some of that background color. But like I said before, I'm going to kind of wiggle this all together with the... Uh, mop brush which will help even the paint layer out and take some of that fuzziness out of it giving more definitive edges okay let me see did i reflect all the buildings pretty close looks like i missed one here okay i think that'll get me kind of where i want to be okay i'll set that brush to the side i'm going to take my one inch mop brush which is nice and soft. It's great for blending. 
And I just want to kind of, where you see all these brush marks where some of it has picked up the background and some of it hasn't and it's very uneven. I can come in and just kind of wiggle that all together so it's more of a flat monotone. It doesn't look like uh, brush stroke on brush stroke. And again, I'm not too worried about the water as much, but I just want to get a more solid look, especially on the top side of the, in the buildings here. Just kind of evens it out somewhat. This is a great little blender brush for softening anything in your painting. Okay, I'm going to come back to this two inch scenery brush and I'll wipe it off. Right in the middle here is my horizon line. There's going to be a, a break where there's going to be water versus the land. So I'm going to wipe this off. I'm going to find that line, just eyeball it. And I want to smear this out of focus a little bit. Pull straight down. Straight down strokes look very reflective, as you can see. See how it looks kind of shimmery like water? Pretty cool, huh? You don't have to use a lot of pressure, but use enough to distort the paint and actually make it smear. It's that blurriness that makes that work. All right. And like I said, you're gonna have a lot more time to elaborate on this at home, so you can take your time. I'm just gonna pop some windows in here. I'm gonna use some of the white base coat. I'm using that rather than the thick white here because I know that the thinner paint will stick. This base coat is already about halfway to the thinness that I need, and you'll see I'm dipping some clear into that to thin it down even further. This is my number two detail brush, detail liner, so I can just kind of randomly plop in some windows. Now if you were doing this at home you really wanted to do a, a tightly rendered job on this. You could actually underpaint this to the point that I've done right now and then let it dry. Um, wet on wet is great. Um, a lot of people like to take it a, a step further and uh, embellish it when it's dry. I do that quite often myself depending on what I want to do, especially in my animal studies and stuff that I do. But it's up to the individual. Painting is one of those personal things that you're going to want to do it your way to your satisfaction. And you're going to have to satisfy yourself before you try to satisfy someone else. So always remember to go with it with gusto, but do it to make yourself happy. Hopefully somebody else will appreciate your work along the way. Okay, there's some windows. I'm going to take some... Uh, of the same color and put corresponding reflections into the water of the windows. And I'm going to come back and blur that here again momentarily. But see, it doesn't take much to get the effect. And I'm not knocking myself out painting perfect little squares. I'm like I said, if you were painting at home and you had a couple hours to really nitpick this, you could take it much farther than what I'm showing you here. This will give you the idea. And I know in the city they don't have just window lights like this. There's all kinds of lights. Red stop lights, flashing warning signs. I'm going to take some white first. This is just white base coat. I'm going to put a few brighter ones in here somewhere, which will kind of become a focal area. You'll see that these being lighter stand out more than the others. And if that's the case, I want them a little more centrally located on the canvas, not way out on the edges. And I'll put those in the water as well. And like I said, there's going to be flashing warning signs and stop lights, all kinds of things going on there. So I'm going to take some red, CAD red deep, and a little bit of the white and some clear to make it come off the brush a little easier. And see, I've got a lot of paint on that round brush. I'm really loading that up. And here and there, I just want to put a few little touches of red, make it look like other things happening in there. It makes it a little more colorful. This is a painting, not a photograph, so I can do it the way I want. I don't have to just take what's there. Okay, that's looking pretty good enough to give you the idea. I'm going to come back with my mop brush. Now this has got 
a little bit of paint on it. So I want to give you a, an important lesson right here. This is worth a whole deal of watching this video right now. If, this, if I immerse this brush into my thinner bucket, it gets very wet. But since it's a natural hair, it tends to hold the moisture a lot. So no matter how much I wipe it, it's still a little bit damp to go back and work with. So what I do is I take a paper towel, rather than saturate the brush with thinner, I take a paper towel like this, I dip it into my cleaning fluid, which is just mineral spirits, and I just rub the brush, the tips of the bristles against the damp rag. See, that gets it just as clean, no residue in it, and just good to go. It's just like it was when I started. Now, when I get done with this, you'd want to clean it thoroughly, but this will give you a way to clean it in between, and it's still dry, dry enough to work with. So I just want to blur that out of focus a little bit in the water too. Stretch those light reflections out a little bit. And I'll come back with my number 10 flat brush that I used earlier to base in the buildings. I'm going to swish this out in my paint thinner, wipe it off. And I want to come back with some wave movements in the water. Just to put a little surface on top of this will give it a little bit of a shimmer so it feels more like water. I'm going to take some of the white base coat and a little bit of the thick white on my palette. And I'm going to use a little bit of blue. I don't want it to be pure white. This is the wrong time of day to have pure white in here on the water. I want something a little cooler, nighttime. So I'm going to chisel this together like this, nice sharp edge. And I'm going to come through and just randomly scuff a few little wave movements through here. You're going to pick up a lot of that background color, so keep your brush wiped off. I'm adding a little bit of the clear medium to it to help it get off the brush a little easier. Make sure they're random and not all the same length. And just don't blatantly draw lines. Notice how I'm kind of just scuffing randomly here and there. Keep them horizontal. Water lays flat, so your strokes should stay flat. But that kind of breaks that up and gives it more of a feeling of water movement. How are we doing? What do you think? Think you could do this? I bet you could. It's really not too difficult. It takes a little practice. Painting does in general, no matter what you're doing. But anything in life takes a little practice. I'm not a golfer. I've never done it. I'm sure if I went out on the links, I would be just about the worst you have ever seen. But I would also just about guarantee you that if I practiced it for a month, I'd probably be better at the end of that 30 days than I was when I started. Painting's the same thing. You gotta get in and start, roll your sleeves up and get at it. You're gonna learn along the way and you will definitely improve. So if it's something you wanna try, give it a shot. Okay, I'm gonna call that Cityscape and I'm gonna say that's a done deal. Thanks for joining me and give this a try and do your own little urban scene. Thanks for tuning in.